to Punjab, to my brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, Makadi, to my brothers and sisters in Zambia, Mwashimuke and Kalimwai Kalachani, and to my brothers and sisters in Kenya and the rest of Africa and indeed the diaspora, welcome. Today I've got a special guest, but before we get into this, I think uh, I will allow my guest to introduce himself and uh, we'll take it up from there. But, you know, this conversation is full of interesting stuff and I hope you will enjoy this. But before we get into that, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe and smack that bell so that every time we uh, I produce content such as this, you'll be there and you'll be the first ones to be notified. And so, here we go. I will let my uh, guest introduce himself. Yeah, everybody out That's there, right, uh, yes. greetings and peace and blessings to you all. Yeah. Um, let's give thanks, as I always say on my channel, to what we have and not think about what we don't have, yeah. you know? Uh, anything after life is a bonus. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, and let me thank you for inviting me on You're your welcome. channel. You're welcome. You know? Yeah. Um, it's been great. It's been great. Absolutely. It's a privilege for me. Yes. You know? And um, an honor as well. You know? Because uh, I, I looked at your channel, I resonate with that. Yeah. And you're doing some really great things. Yeah. yeah. Um, to all out there, formerly I'm Anthony Graham. Yeah. Um, but everybody knows me as Anas. I prefer yes. to be called Anas. Yes. Anas Graham, aka Anas. Yes. Um, born and bred in the UK. That's right. I'm 62 years old. Yeah. Uh, I feel blessed. Yeah. Um, if God spares my life, next month I'll be 63. So, Wonderful. you know, it's been a roller coaster ride journey for my life, but um, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm humble yeah. and I'm grateful. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm born and bred here. Yeah. I live in Jamaica now, but I um, fly in. Yes. I had a building business here. Yeah. So a brief synopsis to everybody out there. Uh, construction is my background. Yeah. I'm a bricklayer by trade, but um, I do all the trades. Uh, started a building business here when I was 22. Wow. In 1982. Yeah. yeah. Spent eight and a half years in um, building college, mm -hmm. straight from school. Yeah. Uh, the first five years of that yes. was for a company called Fairclough. Um, oh, sorry, I, I beg your pardon. The first year I was with um, the Royal Barrow and Kensington Chelsea, wow. okay. where I started my apprenticeship. But then um, I wasn't getting enough work, so yeah. I farmed my papers out to all the big companies then, who were in those days, Taylor Woodrow, Le Lang, Lovell, mm -hmm. and Fairclough were one of them. They picked up my papers. Yeah. To cut a long story short, they moved me from um, Lime Grove School of Building mm -hmm. to Vauxhall School of Building. Yeah. Uh, I did a four-year apprenticeship there. Yeah. Um, three years initially as a bricklayer, and then a year as an advanced craft. Yeah. But to come back again, when I left school at 16, I went on a BTEC National yeah. for two years. Yes. At Lime Grove School of Building because it was my aim to be an architect, you know. Mm -hmm. But the the scientific maths yeah. and physics yeah. for two years got me. Although I I, I got through all the other That's right. the other um, subjects. Yeah. Uh, and after two years, I thought, no, I didn't want to leave building, mm. but I would um, pick up a trade okay. uh, within building. Yeah. And I thought Brooklyn was the best thing because you're starting from the ground up. Absolutely. You're in the trend. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Uh, and for me, for the life it's given me, yeah. I must say it was the best It was the best thing. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Um, so that's where my journey started. Fantastic. Um, at uh, 22, mm. I, I only went back to stay on it college, just yeah. technical college, yeah. to further my education when I decided to start a business. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It made so, sense. So you, 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 you were running after a while, you started running your own business, yeah? Yeah, I started, okay. I mean, you know, without going into debt, and uh, uh, there's many people out there who start a business, so they know the hardship. Mm -hmm. I started with a bag of tools and a level. All right. And uh, I got a um, an accountant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He directed me to someone then, uh, Hammersmith and Fulham Council, yeah. who gave me um, gave me some pointers, mm. which helped me. Yeah. Um, and then after printed some cards and and contracts coming in, yeah, I eventually uh, ended up employing twelve men. Um, got an office. Yeah. Um, so I'm moving very fast forward now. That's, that's, yeah, no, got, that's, an office, that's, yeah. got an office. Got an office. 
and then I got into doing commercial construction, yeah, yeah. new build. Yeah, yeah. When I say commercial restaurants, mm -hmm. new build, um, conversion. Yeah. And um, I had a portfolio for a letting company in London. Okay. They had about 150 flats. Oh right, that's good. Yeah. So I did all their maintenance. Okay. So for me, it was it was lucrative. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I had my ups and downs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I had a good architect as well. Okay. Who I liaise with, right. plus the various subcontractors, roofers, okay. plumbers, electricians. So tell us a little bit. I mean, you've been in the industry for quite a long time. So what? We, so at what yeah, point? 40, you, 46 years now. 46 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still in the industry. Yeah, I mean, I fly in. I subcontract as a bricklayer okay. and fly out. I closed my business in 2010. Okay. I started another business at the same at, in um, a commercial business, which I have now. Yeah. In uh, 1995. Okay. And it ran alongside with my building business. Fantastic. So when you closed your business, what what happened? Did you just remain in the UK or you moved somewhere else? Uh, what I decided to do was, yeah. for me, it was how can I say mm. um, a two tier thing. Mm -hmm. It was a spiritual journey. As much as um, yeah. I felt that I'd gone as far really as I wanted to go in the UK yeah. and I wanted to get back to to Jamaica where I'd been going since a child yeah, yeah. Um, and do something there. But what I decided to do was nothing to do with construction there. Yes. So I decided to close the both companies down yeah, yeah. but re-establish the commercial company in Jamaica. Okay. The company, by the way, is called Jelly Pepper Commercial Enterprises Limited. Right. Okay. It started off in the UK yeah. as Jelly Enterprises Limited. Yes. But I've got a registered trademark. Yeah. So what I decided to do when I moved the business to Jamaica mm -hmm. is merge the trademark with yeah. the with the company now. Okay. Okay. You know? um, so that was the ethos for me. Yeah, I find that um, I find that and to move it in on, into another another level so in 2010 you moved to jamaica uh, and, and established that commercial business how yeah was, yeah i, I set jamaica? it up there i think 2011 but i i started moving up from two, 2010. all right i think in our conversation just before we started recording if i remember you did mention that other than uh, uh being involved in uh, uh construction there's another uh, uh field that you're involved in uh, I think you mentioned coaching, I think, at one point. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's another reason why so I'm here. So you can just share a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm an FA licensed football coach. Yeah. Uh, that journey started for me in 2016. Mm. It actually it actually was prompted by um, a team I formed in Jamaica called yeah. Jelly Pepper. Okay. Yeah, which was in any, anybody out there who knows, knows Jamaica. Yeah. Um, Hawkwell, Hanover, mm -hmm. um, which is the... I would say the northwest side of the island, okay. parish of Hanover, um, and um, when I when I was asked to to uh, form a club out there, mm. I thought, well, no disrespect to uh, the Jamaican Football Association, I thought yeah. I'm born and bred in the UK. The best place for me to fly back and get my badges yeah. were here. Mm -hmm. So that journey started for me in 2016, okay. and it's an ongoing process. I've been coaching there mm -hmm. um, from that time, and since traveling to Kenya, I'm officially okay. doing some coaching for a club there okay. known as Amara Dane, oh, right. okay. um, which is in Nairobi. All right. So yeah. are you saying that... Uh, through football that introduced you to Africa and Kenya. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, so that's you. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate. It. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bon appetit, as we say. You know. Enjoy. Yeah. Um, yes. It's unfortunately you out there can't share the, the, the brilliant lunch. Absolutely. We're just having. Yeah. Having so you lunch, know. Yeah. I'm sure we'll enjoy it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. Uh, I think it's very important. I mean, look, let me be real about this. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's, uh, it's, um, let's bless the food first. Yeah. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, let's give thanks and praises for this food because uh, right now there's a lot of people right now who who can't have a good meal like yes. this so yes. i pray that god blesses them mm -hmm. uh so that they can eat and yeah. find a meal for today yeah uh and i'll be thinking about them 
and I'm sure you will, Kelvin. Absolutely. While we're enjoying this, week. yeah. So we give thanks. Yeah. Here we go. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, so coming good. back to it, yeah. Um, you know, it's. Uh, I think you know. Let me. I think people out there have to realize. Yeah. Um, God never does anything without reason. Yeah. You know. Even if we don't know what our future is, trust yeah. me on this, it's already written. Absolutely. Our destiny is already written. Absolutely. You know, and I believe that uh, yeah. being Muslim. Yeah. Um, but also, you have to go towards your destiny yeah. in order to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when a voice said to me, leave the UK and go to Jamaica, yeah. that's what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, my gut in instinct told me. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't penalize me because I fly back. Yeah. It's given me a great life. I fly back, I earn money, and I fly out again. Yeah, yeah. And I would say to anybody who, who who's not tied down in any way, uh, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way to people who have families or whatever, yeah. who can't move as easily. Yeah. Yeah. But I say if you're single, you don't have any debts, yeah. uh, you have a job that which is professional, and it enables you to to jump on board and, and get off anytime you want mm -hmm. and get out there and see the world because because of my profession yeah. it's enabled me to travel many places in the world That's right. uh, without using that profession in the countries I did it yeah. just enabled me to earn good money yeah. to be able to go where I want see what I want yeah. and gain knowledge at the same time okay. So, I mean, being in Africa for a while, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, there's, there's a lot of information about Africa now and um, a lot of people tend to understand that, you know, opportunities are there in Africa. Um, while it's coaching in there, have you been engaged in, 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 in some business or have you started something in Africa or what, what, what are your plans for Africa? Well, what I decided to do was, um, I thought, as well as um, God telling me, leave Jamaica and go to Africa, mm. I thought, okay, let me make a trip uh, yeah. and do a fact-finding mission. Yes. I decided to um, take a trip to um, South Africa, but mm. just, I think it was a day before I was about to leave Jamaica to go. Yeah. I um I saw some some news. I won't go into it in depth. Yeah, yeah. Down there, that was a, a few problems. Of course, of course and then yes. I decided, no, let me change. Yeah. Um, I'll hold that thought, but I said, let me change. Um, I'm sure I'll make it down there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I thought, I'd let me change direction. So I had to think. I thought carefully. I mean, a lot of people were going to Ghana, yeah. Gambia. And I'm a maverick, so I always cut against the grain. Yeah. I don't go where everybody else is going, you know? Yeah. So I had to think, where else in Africa would I feel that I'd be comfortable and good? Yeah. When I thought about it, I remembered Kenya, mm -hmm. you know? Um, they speak English. Their formal language is Kiswahili. Yeah. Uh, they're a very mild, mild people. Yeah. Uh, I checked out the economy, it seemed good. Yeah, uh, people are uh, people are good. Yeah. So I said, yeah, let me go down. Yeah. So I flew there, not knowing anybody. Yeah. And um, not knowing anyone. Yeah. With the intentions of going down there, first of all, uh, on the basis of football, mm. you know, to look at seeing how I could um, get into coaching down there. How is everything? Yeah, it's great. No, right. Yeah, thank you very much. No, that's no, fine. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Um, and to cut a long story short, yeah, because um, I know we're we're pressed for time as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I um, I was directed to a great guy down there who was a very good friend of mine in Kenya. In Kenya, yeah, yeah. Um, an icon. In actual fact, um, he also works for a radio station, which I would uh, encourage people to tap into. It's an online station called Icon Radio. Okay. But he himself is an icon. His name is Innocent Mutisa. Okay. And um, yeah, he was. Um, ex-footballer yeah. for his country mm -hmm. and um, one of the top teams there Gormahia and he opened some massive doors for me okay. you know he introduced me to the, the club that um, he was playing for after his career yeah. um, um, died down a little bit in terms of him 
wanting to focus on being a, a football ambassador, mm -hmm. um, he introduced me to a local team known as Imara Daily. Yeah. And from that, I decided to get to know what Kenya was really like. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person who will get on the ground. And I'd say for any diaspora, when you, when you go to Africa, yeah. um, don't go with any disillusion. Don't go with sometimes any idea. Get your goal. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, yeah, I decided to move the business from Jamaica to, to Kenya. To Kenya. Like there, you, yeah. there's, a, there's a process. There's a process. So yeah. after doing my due diligence, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me. After doing my due diligence, I decided to um, to get some Kenyan lawyers. Um, I made them aware of um, the protocol, yeah. and um, we sat down. Yeah. Um, I paid them to, to register the business. Yeah. I took one of them on, George. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to George and Yango. Yeah. As um, a director mm -hmm. uh, with some shares. Um, and um, Frank as company secretary. Um, Frank Juma. Mm -hmm. And um, then we, we started the process of, um, which was last year, 2021. So, coming back, I made my decision in 2018. Yeah. Um, I diverted from South Africa to Kenya. Um, obviously, I didn't get to South Africa. It's yeah. my plan to go back down there. Yeah. Um, and while coaching, unofficially coaching football down there, mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, you know what? Kenya's a good place to, to set up. Yeah. People are good. Um, uh, country is a progressive country. Mm -hmm. um, so coming forward again, I, I did all of that, and um, it's an ongoing process because um, last year I applied for the special pass, which gives you uh, three months residency yeah. and and it also doubles up as a work permit. Yeah. I didn't get that, which I was surprised at because I put in all the correct papers. Mm. Um, but it was it was not a biggie for me because Kenyans are still tied to. The company so it means the Kenyan the, the company can still run yeah. and basically what it is is I decided to set up my memorandum and articles yeah. so that I registered I think um, it, as a diverse company which can do many different things mm -hmm. which is what it was doing in Jamaica you know um, to that extent yeah. so from I don't know selling a glass to to selling computers to, to whatever but I decided to specialize in certain areas okay. now the first thing I did was yeah. I thought look I've got a construction background mm -hmm. I looked to health and safety in Africa as a whole yeah uh, also in Kenya mm -hmm. they have a, a certain amount of health and safety there but when I looked at the industry and as far as the clothing yeah I'm coming from a construction background here yeah. And it's very stringent here, as you know, because yeah, yeah. you're in construction yeah, itself, yeah. Um, as a quality surveyor. Yeah. I realized there was a, um, a void in that section that could be filled and also be a good business prospect. Yeah. So I designed, I've got a 14-piece closing collection yeah. under the company, mm -hmm. and of those 14 pieces, four of those pieces uh, are fall into construction. Okay. So I designed um, construction safety trousers, yeah. uh, construction high vis, mm -hmm. two types. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, this would be a good thing to get not only into Kenya but into all of Africa. Into all of Africa. Yeah. Okay. You know. Have you, have you got samples that we can have? I do have? actually. Okay. Um, I have them in my bag. All right. Do Let we me show you? Let's have a look at them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. The first one I'm going to show you is the. I'll, I'll have to step out here. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is the um, construction high vis. Yeah. Which I um, designed. Mm -hmm. Which is, um, if you can see. Yeah. It's a high visibility. Yeah. Now the difference with this is yeah. it has. Uh, an external pocket on the front 
me just show you. Has a, a big, a large external pocket on the front. So you can use it for drawings, whatever. It's it's practical. Yeah. The material's good. The fabric's good. Um, it comes in. It comes in long sleeve and short sleeve. It has a pocket on each arm. The material is good. It's also moderate, modest for women, so it's unisex. It's for male and female, yeah. um, as you can see. Um, good quality material. So this was one of the, in, in the actual fact, it's made in Kenya as well. Okay. It's made in Kenya. So that was another plan of mine, to make sure that the garments are made in Africa. Mm -hmm. You know. The second garment I'm going to show you okay. is the health and safety trousers that I've designed. Mm -hmm. You'll see something similar here, but the color is going to be different. So basically, you've got six six pockets on the front. That's the back. Yeah. You've got six pockets on the front. Okay. This is a, a blue over grey, as a po as well as you can get it grey over blue. You've got your high vis on the pockets, your D-rings for clips, keys, whatever, tapes. You've got internal pockets, external pocket on the front, external pocket on the left, and pockets for your knee pads to go. To go. Yeah. You also have uh, a back pocket with a flap, two back pockets. You can see the Jelly Pepper logo there. So that's the trademark. Okay. And that's that's the Jelly Pepper logo. Um, it also comes in brown and olive, okay. which I'm going to show you. This is the brown and the olive. Yes, can you put it on? Thanks. So this color, that the, the first color, the blue and the gray, would be for let's say electricians, plumbers. Yeah. This color would be like for your construction workers. It's also good for industrial and construction okay. and DIY. So this is the same trousers you've just seen, but in brown and olive, and olive on brown. You know, good, 100% cotton, good fabric, good wearing fabric so I want this to resonate with um, everyone out there uh, whether in construction or not but especially in Africa because I'm trying to raise the awareness I think trying is a negative way negative word I'm raising the awareness for good proper health and safety within Africa the company sells the accessories like boots gloves construction hat but that is an add-on with the with the um, garment. Okay. But it, it's also a, ne a necessity, and it's also needed. You know, um, there is another high vis which I don't have with me for lorry drivers, truck drivers, uh, bother bothers there, um, and anyone who drives, even yourself as a driver, it's always good to have a high vis in the back of your vehicle. Yeah. You know, um, but that high vis is different. Okay. The next time I come back, I'll, I'll show you that. All right. But um, yeah, it's about raising awareness yeah. within the construction industry. Mm -hmm. But Jelly Pepper Commercial Enterprise Limited is not just about clothing. Yeah. It's a commercial company, so there is a lot more in the bag. But obviously, to make the money, the first thing mm -hmm. I tapped into was what I know, which is construction. Yeah. You know, and what is needed within Africa. Yeah. You know, it's my plan. To, to the garments are being made in, in Kenya, but it's also my plan to re-import them here and sell here. Okay. You know, because competition is wide and far, and there's always space for me just as much as anybody else. That's good. So that's it. You know. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for. So anybody out there who resonates with that, get in touch. You know, yeah. or is interested. Companies, individuals, it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, especially in Africa, yeah, because um, Africa is what we're pushing, mm -hmm. you know. And the garment is made in Kenya, yeah. So it's a good collaboration, designed by a Jamaican, made by a Kenyan. Absolutely. You know? uh, and you know, they have all the resources down there. Yeah. This is another thing about Africa. I think people, people have got um, preconceived ideas that they don't have the facility to do everything that they can do here in the West. Yeah. They have it just as much, you know? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, if they didn't, you wouldn't have the Chinese down there, the Lebanese down Absolutely. there, the Indians down there. Yeah. You know? 
So uh, let's not forget that. Yeah. You know. Um, and Africa is the is going to be the pinnacle Africa, for the future. For the future. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. No, so that, right. that's, that's really good. That and who better to, to to control that helm? Yeah. Than than Africans themselves. Absolutely. You know. So there we are, guys. Are you know? I could look at this. This is very good material, and you know, really looks good. So you guys out there. Yeah, in Africa, unisex as well. Absolutely. For male and female. Yeah. You so know. wherever you are in Africa, and if you're looking for our uh, construction safety. Um, yeah, reach out. Uh, reach out. The uh, clothing. Jennypepper.com. Absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll, what we'll do is I'll put the details uh, in the link uh, in the description section. So if you can go to that, uh, it will take you to um, uh, my brother's uh, website, and uh, and I think we'll put his contact details as well there, so you can actually try and get in touch with him and try and promote. Africa and it's the Sporian people to do this. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is saying, build it and they will come. Absolutely. Build it and they will come. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously it's like everything else. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm eating potatoes now. Not everybody likes potatoes. They yeah. might want rice. Yeah. So the cliche to that is, is, you know, some people won't resonate with the garments, mm -hmm. but but some people will. Yeah. Uh, and a product sells itself. Mm -hmm. The ones who want will come. Um, and hopefully, the, eventually, the ones who who uh, seem disinterested at first will we'll, we'll, uh, gather pace and momentum when they see everybody else jumping on. So, no. obviously we've taxed about, we've, ta we've looked at um, the products that you're producing in yeah. Kenya. For the future, do you think of settling in Africa or just doing business? Oh yeah, no, mo most definitely. You know, yeah. God guided me there and, yeah. um, and uh, as I say, I, 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 I feel I'm one of the woke person and I, I felt that I think since 2010 okay. to be honest with you yeah you know it was like a spirit was calling me mm. which led via Jamaica but back to Africa so right so your heart is and God you feel is leading you to Africa is there anything that you want or you would wish the African government could do yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that is profound. That's a big yeah. question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's there's countries like Ghana and and um, yeah. Gambia. I think Senegal mm -hmm. uh, uh, opening up the the door for yeah. the diaspora. Um, slowly but surely yeah i mean i know ghana um have had their year of return yes and i think um, i think it's this year that i think it, i'm not too sure if it's this month yeah. someone out there can correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. they're having the year beyond return yeah um i read that um i read that uh, ghana was um I think it was five billion American dollars in debt at one point when they had a year of return, and I think six thousand Americans brought in or generated one point nine billion mm -hmm. of of revenue, which which is a third of that debt mm -hmm. wiped off. You know, so I think it it's only it's a no brainer yeah. that most African governments should realise. Uh, Open up the door to the diaspora, yeah. who are as well African. Not only brings in revenue, it brings in the knowledge. Now, I'm not saying that they should change their constitution. That's a profound thing. Yeah. But there should be a facility based on the fact mm. that, ancestrally speaking, I'm an African. Oh, of course. So. I am a child of stolen children who were stolen out of Africa. But you know what? Who just, wants to come back? Just just pausing on, on, on what you just said, that you are an African. For me, yeah. when I see, I don't know, maybe other people, <laughs> uh, other Africans, when I see an African or somebody of my color here, the first thing that I think is they're an African. I don't think of them being American or... or exactly, Canada. yeah. I, until I speak to them, then they'll say, oh yeah, I'm from Jamaica, yeah. but the first thing that comes in my mind is, there's my brother from Africa. Exactly, yeah. So I could say that the nationality is yeah. is uh, Jamaican, but the root is African, you know, yeah. which which comes first. Mm. We're all Africans, yeah. you know. Um, and coming back to your question, I think it's, yeah, it's important that the, these governments mm. realize the benefit mm. of having some form of facility mm you know, which enables us yeah. to come, 
with a lot more ease mm. than if I if even coming to, to set up my business, getting lawyers. It should be something that facilitates yeah. us on the basis of we are so many generations yeah. of the root people that come from you. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I say, it's a no-brainer. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's just for them to open up their eyes and see that. Yeah. I mean, let's not let's not get it wrong. I mean, you know, you can't, you, the cliche is you can't overload the table with food and expect us to eat it yes, in yes. one go, which means the people themselves from Africa, yeah. in those different countries, mm -hmm. you have to be able to take it to them yeah. and make them understand mm -hmm. that we're all one and the same. Yeah. You can't just flood, okay. open the gates up and flood. Now, but uh, there must be a facility. Yeah, I, I think... This program that I, or this series that I'm running is actually how to build in Africa or in Zambia while living in the diaspora. And I think one thing that the diasporians, I think I refer to in brackets, in brackets are actually the, the, the Zambians uh, living in the, or the Africans with roots there living in the diaspora. Hmm. But we have to recognize that it's not just the Africans from Africa yeah. that are diasporians. There is people like yourselves. Now, this is about building in Africa. Uh, and being on the ground in, in, in Kenya, have you, dis with your, your, your vision or your dream is to settle there, how easy is it for you to acquire land? I know there's issues there. Um, um, so, I mean, I haven't looked at it in depth, yeah. but um, I would say, mm. as far as I know, um, it's not that easy. Mm. Uh, I think, um, I mean, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. There's two ways of uh, a foreigner um, acquiring land. Yeah. You, know? um, you cannot, I don't think as a foreigner you can um, acquire agricultural land. Okay. As far as I know, mm. I could be wrong. Um, but the two ways I know, you can only, you can either do it through um, marrying a Kenyan. Yeah. And then, obviously gaining your citizenship or you can do it as part of buying shares within a company that owns land okay. so I've set up a business there if the company was to buy land mm. indirectly I would have a share of what but that company owns through owning shares within that company but these rules actually do not recognize the fact that you have yes as you said many generations have links to Africa so these are just rules that applies to anybody coming into Africa, is it? There's nothing like any special rules for you guys. Well, I'm sure each country has its own rules, yeah. but um, uh, it, I don't think it's going to be easy because obviously you have to remember mm. the land is ancestral land for the Kenyans or Ghanaians, or Senegalese, or even Zambians mm. who were already there. Yeah. So it's not easy to say you're going to let people in to uh, acquire land before knowing that there's something set up for them to be able to acquire that land. So what we need, yeah. what we need is governments first and foremost recognize diasporians and then possibly put special measures to accommodate for those who would want to return back home. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. it should be. I, I don't want to. I don't want to make it a special case, but mm. I think that there there must be ways that a person could yeah. could buy land uh, on the basis of wanting to live there, yeah. establish, yeah. use the land, make it beneficial to those mm. around. Um, I know, like when you when you buy land in Ghana, people can buy land in Ghana. Mm. You have to speak to the local chiefs. Mm -hmm you know, mm -hmm. who have as much power as, as the government mm -hmm. in, in terms of selling land. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure it, it would be the same with many African countries, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, 
it's like in Zambia when I, I checked out you have traditional land yeah, we got and then you have state land absolutely you know? yeah. and then your land is overseen by the president himself yeah. you know mm. which you have to get a special edict mm. to be able to buy the land especially as a foreigner yeah. you know mm. um, and I think they have almost nearly the same rules as Kenya in terms so, of yeah. who can buy what and how yeah. if you're not from there yeah. you know I think just the people that are watching out there across Africa uh, could you tell us what sort of rules apply in each of the countries that you are in and if there's anything that uh, governments need to do to recognize our brothers in the diaspora these are brothers in North America the, the, uh, South America the South America the Caribbeans if there's anything like that that we need our governments to do remember these are our brothers that left the mainland and they would like to come back so share your comments in the in the in the um, comment section and it would be interesting to hear what you think yeah i mean let's be realistic like i say i mean nothing's going to happen overnight but yeah. you know it takes a crack to to form a void absolutely so you know even if we could get a crack yeah. you know um it's a start. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. Um, I've always said I'd like to be the drop that starts the ocean yeah. in yeah. Kenya. So in terms of I hope a lot of people can look at my journey which is still ongoing. Yeah. And you know, come and have a look at Kenya and everywhere yeah. else. Yeah. Like yeah. I say I was in Ethiopia, but the problem there was was when I tried to send money out of the country, I couldn't. They allow the foreign currency to come in but they yeah. didn't allow me yeah. to send it out. Yeah. So I had to ship. Yeah. Anyway. I'm sure that there's quite rigid reasons why it is like that. Yeah, maybe it's changed yeah. since I was there, but yeah. um, I did speak to one of their biggest banks and, yeah. you know, That's I was told that. No, this is, this is really a very interesting conversation. I really appreciate it. Uh, Again, no, I'm glad you. I'm glad for being able to give them to give them the chance to come on. And absolutely, and I hope that we share with you. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a start. I mean, like I said, the, the conversation that I've started on my YouTube channel kind of narrowed down to people with the African uh, roots. Mm -hmm. But then we, nah, I wouldn't say well, everybody has it. Africans who are coming from the Af from African continent right now uh, into the diaspora. So I'm causing myself a diaspora but yeah. a Zambian in the diaspora yeah. I've, I've got my home in Zambia. I mean I think one factor that we are forgetting is these people like the Jamaicans yeah, I mean, They're you know, I mean, you, I was in Ethiopia, I mean, there's a place in Shashamani, I think there's yeah. about 7,000 Jamaicans down there, yeah. there's Jamaicans in Ghana, yeah. Gambia, yeah. even, um, you know, UK Jamaicans like myself who are, are moving to Africa, yeah. but like I say, Africa isn't for everyone, and it's, it has to be a mental thing, a, mental a spiritual thing, thing, a spiritual thing, thing yes. uh, to make it a practical thing, Absolutely. you know, and I think for anybody who thinks, looks at Africa and thinks, well, you know, I'm not ready for that, yeah. Don't dispel it out of hand without actually going down there and having a look. And have a look, you know. That's a very important point you know? to say. Go and have a look, see what is there. Exactly. What Africa has to offer. Yeah, take the positives and push the negatives to one side. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if you're going to, I mean, let me, let me um, uh, say this. Mm. I'm not in Kenya by chance. Yeah. For me, I was guided there spiritually. Okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, I believe, I, I mean, you know, I went to Mount Kenya, which, which, I, which actually is Mount Zion, mm -hmm. you know. I think spiritually, Kenyans were the first people on the planet, mm. you know, in as far as the melanated people. Mm. And I think a lot of Kenyans themselves don't realize that, mm. you know. So, you know, in t that sense, they're, they're as blessed as anybody else. Mm. But um, the moral of that is, is I want to make a contribution. I yeah. want to leave a good legacy. Absolutely. You know, yeah. especially as someone who's black, mm. whose roots are African. Yes. You know, and I think we have a moral responsibility to be able to do something mm. to make sure that Africa rises yeah. and has its place where it should be, which is on the top. On the top, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's right. our time. Yeah, it is our time. I wanted to say any last words or... <laughs> <laughs> I like think I've said enough. You've said enough, yeah. yeah. So I'd just like to say a big shout out to anybody that knows me. Um, 
uh, a big up to people like, as I say, Dr. Long, Patrick Mumba, uh, Uma Johnson. I'd like to say a, a, a big shout out to all the Jennifer models out there. Um, Charity Suter, who's sales and marketing manager for my company, she's done a great job. Um, someone I know, who's special to me, uh, Khadija. Um, uh, Faith, uh, Mutiso, Chims, Wheelo, many people. You know? Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, everybody out there that knows me, a big shout out to you all. Um, and um, peace and blessings. Right. And who doesn't know me, you know, I give you all my blessings and love. Right, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, like I say, I mean, yeah. thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. Yes. You know? um, without further ado, man hungry, <laughs> so <laughs> I want to finish my food. You know. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Please. Uh, I hope you've been, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this conversation. And uh, if you did, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and smart that bell. And hey, why not share this video to everyone in the diaspora, my brothers in the diaspora in our Jamaica? You know. Yeah. One last thing. All my family in Jamaica. All the all the people yeah. in Oakwell and over. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Rachel, everybody out there that knows me, can't yeah. forget Jamaica. Yeah. You know, big teams are one, big up yourself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, and all the diaspora here. Absolutely. Everybody who knows me in the UK, I'm born and bred here. Yeah, I'd like to also say a big shout out to my daughter Jamila and um, Sarah, who's been massive uh, for me. Um, yeah, great. And um, I hope you liked the, the, uh, the video. And how do we say bye in or uh, is it until next time in Patwa? In Adamaro. Adamaro. <laughs> there we are. Something to learn from. God bless you and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.